welcome back to the Don Bullock Chevrolet Morning Show. We have Kathy Akers. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Sandra. How are you today? I'm doing good. I hope you are. Mm -hmm. Doing well. And we have, you are with Fathom Realty. Yes. And Kathy always has very good topics. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're just going to talk about some topics. We've mentioned these in the past, and it's always good to bring them back up, especially as people we're going into the holiday season right and um, and that kind of thing but it, people start now to think about are they going to put their house on the market in the spring right right so let's kind of get a head start on those kinds of things and even now is a great time to put your house on the market because people who are looking during the holidays are actually people that need to move right um, they're either job um, or something along that that line that they're not out just, you know, um, as we used to call the looky lose, you know, oh, right. it's an open house this weekend, I'm just going to go by and see what pretty colors they've used, you know. So people out right now are actually looking because they need to make that move. Right, right, and right. So, um, so some things to think about is um, do you want to get an appraisal on your property to begin with? Um, that helps establish a solid price line for your home. <clears throat> um, we're seeing things um, ap appreciate more in our area. Right. Um, but, you know, right now is one of those times when things, um, especially in the higher end price ranges, start to um, stall down. I, I hate to use that word, but we start to see, you know, we're not seeing as many go under contract right now. So, um, you know, possibly having an appraiser come in to give you um, a good, pr uh, good um, value on your home. Um, the next thing to do is do your homework. Um, talk to, real, you know, you're going to want to talk with a real estate agent and use a yes. real estate agent because we know what forms you're going to need to use. There are some um, disclosures that you are required by law to, to um, put together if you're selling your home whether you're selling it with an agent or by yourself, there are some um, disclosures and things like that that you are required to use. But the other thing is, is we then look at what is marketing around you um, because what is currently on the market is going to help determine how quickly or slowly your house is going to sell compared to those. So having a, a real estate professional to sit down with you and go through that marketing process and the mark and finding a marketable range for you on your home, um, and that can piggyback with that appraisal. You know, so um, just because they tell you that you can get X for your house or your house appraises at right. X, you know, if the current market is not showing that that's, that's right, a, that's that you know that that's a range that you can get then you really need to, you know, look at all aspects. Um, you know, you don't want to put your house on the market overpriced and then for it to sit there a while because then people start going, well, what's wrong with the house? Well, that's the reason you need a real estate agent. Don't try to do it yourself. Don't try to, you need a professional. Um, yeah. They know um, what you, you know, they know the ranges, the that's price right. ranges. They know what you can, and, and they possibly can tell you, oh, you're, you're too low. You can get yeah. more for the house than that. So, right. you know, that's why you need a professional. Well, the other, you know, we're going to look at, you know, if you did have an appraiser look at that, we're going to look at that price as well because, you know, they may be seeing things trending up that yes. we haven't quite seen. Um, but the other thing is, is, you know, if you've not done that and, you know, we've t and we talk about the marketable range, we also need to make sure that we're not overpricing, you know, or sure. underpricing for your um, for your home. So, you know, um, by looking at what's out there on the market, what's sold on the market, those are the things that we'll look at to help um, find that um, right place for you to be um, in that um, for pricing your home. Um, you want to finish any major repairs. Um, you know, those things that you've been putting off, that kind of thing. Um, I would suggest, and it, it makes good sense, is to go ahead and have um, a home inspection mm -hmm. ahead of time. 
Right. Um, they're like, why pay for that up front? The buyer's going to do it. You don't want to be caught off guard when that home inspector comes in and finds major damage in the house that you're not aware of. Right. Then you're looking at, okay, where am I going to get the money to make right. the repairs? You may still be asking that, but you know up front and you can make an adjustment to pricing if that's going to be, um, you know, a, a consideration. Remember, just because you replaced the roof and just because you did some things that need to be done doesn't always mean that you can ask a higher price right, for them. Right, absolutely. Um, you know, they're expecting you to sell the house with walls, um, furniture, you know, um, with a roof, HVAC, right. appliances, that kind of thing. So just because you replace the roof, yes, that's an expense. But that's an expense that you would have had whether you were selling the house or not. So, um, look, but you know, take time to look at those things. Um, having that home inspection ahead of time, um, you know, is going to show up any um, any damage, um, that kind of thing. Um, and let me also say, don't try to just cosmetically. Um, repair things because it does come out mm -hmm. you know um, you've had a leak in the bathroom floor don't have somebody just come in and put plywood underneath the house to cover up the damage oh absolutely there still could be there's still possible structural damage and that kind of thing go ahead and do it right just right. you know get somebody that you know is reputable and that knows what they're doing and can do the job correctly um, because you know, a, a home buyer is really, really going to start questioning when they see that you've cosmetically done something and not really taken care of the issue. Um, so you know, those are some things to think about. The other thing to, um, to think about, and this is leading me into our next part of this, is let's talk about staging. Um, not everybody can hire somebody professionally to stage their home. Um, you know, there's some companies that, you know, if you've had to go ahead and move and your house has no furniture in it, mm -hmm. you know, there's some, com you know, you can contract with somebody to maybe bring in some um, furniture to stage right. a couple of the rooms of your house. The main ones that you want to talk about, um, because you know that's still that first impression, mm -hmm. and you want to have buyers to be able to see them in the in the house. Yeah, I know. love staging because mm -hmm. it gives you the visual. Yes, it, it gives does. you a great visual, and those stagers are great at what they do. They but, are, um, and and you want to see. Yeah, I, I love to go in and look at houses that have been, <laughs> yes. I'm one of those, Kathy. You're, you're, you're one, of those. one of those. I, I, I understand. Like to look. I understand. Um, but remember, that is the, when they come in, you know, we've, we talk about the pictures, we talk about the drive-by, but then when they get in the house, we want them to know what they're getting into, you know. Um, but let's say you don't have the budget to hire a professional stager what can you do and we've talked about some of these things in the past um, with minimal staging and especially the key rooms you can get um, you can do it yourself and you can really make an impact mm -hmm. the main rooms that you want to look at <coughs> are the living room the kitchen the master bedroom or owner's bedroom and the dining room so some of the smaller rooms guest rooms and that kind of thing not necessarily okay but you also want to make sure that that first room that they walk oh into, absolutely that's the gives big you the wow factor because that sets the tone for that's the rest right. of the house okay that's right. so let's talk about some things um, as we talked about before clearing out the clutter you know, um, that's probably your most affordable and easiest way to take and make a good impression. Um, is you know, you're you're trying to sell your home. You're wanting to move. You're going to have to pack anyway. So let's go ahead and start packing up some of that clutter. And I hate to use the word clutter, but you know, 
think about when well, you we walk, all have it. We do have it. You know, um, what is it? The comedian that says we all will have stuff, yes, and we stuff. buy bigger houses to put more stuff That's in. That's right. That's right. So um, you know, for if you're and if you're looking to downsize. Um, that's another thing. You're going to have to get rid of some of the things that you have if you're planning to move from a larger home to a smaller home mm -hmm. because you're not going to want to put it in a rental unit for no. <laughs> forever. So, um, you know, maybe that might be the wise idea. We'll just stick it in the a storage unit and let our kids deal with it later. But, you know, um, let's go ahead and be realistic and um, start doing that. Um, you want to make sure that you arrange furniture so that the room looks open. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we always like, you know, I've seen where they've had it all cluttered, you know, jammed yes. around the fireplace, you know, and the TVs over the fireplace and that kind of thing. But then you can't walk through the right, room. you can't. You know, open it up. Um, you know, dad's favorite recliner, you know, if you're covering it up with a blanket because the upholstery's worn, guys, go ahead and, you know, I know Dad loves that recliner, but let's go ahead and move it out of the way, you know, and open yes. it up so that, you know, we're not blocking the flow of traffic through the room. If it looks too crowded, like, there, you know, people are going to think the room's small. Right. You don't want that. If you've got plenty of space, you know, let's show them how much space you have in those rooms. Um, you know, like I said, if it need, needs to be that you put things in a storage unit for a while, by all means, you know, remember that's the stuff you're taking with you, but you also want to make it so that people can see what you do have now. Absolutely. Um, reduce the personal touch. We've talked about this before. Um, you know, let the buyer visualize themselves in that home. You know, um, personal pictures, um, th all the extra. To me, it's not so much the pictures, but it's the trophies, the kids' toys, the pet stuff, that collection, whether it right. be, um, they mentioned Game of Thrones yes. figurines, or your China dolls, you know, those kinds of things. You know, those collectible things that we have everywhere and, you know, let's take and go ahead and start packing those things. You know, some of those figurines and, and things like that are very expensive. One, you don't want them to go missing. Two, you don't want something to get broke. And if you have that, um, my favorite story to use is you know, it's that little girl coming in mm -hmm. with chocolate on her hands and sees that right. little, that favorite doll on the bed. You know, you know where we're, where we're going with that. So, you know, go ahead and take and remove those things, pack them up, help to, you know, um, make it, you know, a more neutral living space. I remember Brit everything Brittany ever made. She used to do this little painting thing class, and I, all the everything she ever made, she would want to place it on the mantel, and I'd say, "Oh, yeah." You know, I loved yeah. it, but, but no, yeah. something else on the mantel. But that's what do you right. say? So that's that stuff right. Just has to go. You know, just and, go. and it may be one of those things that you do um, a simple little bulletin board on the inside of their mm -hmm. closet. You yeah. know, the closet's closed when people are touring you know they're going to open it but mm -hmm. they're going to see it inside there and it's not on the refrigerator mm -hmm. and it's not you know hanging up everywhere or take a couple of their favorite pieces that yes. they've done and frame them use that as your art right you know um, but think about that um, you know I always say you know um, especially in your family room that's where the family congregates if you've got a pet, have a basket for the pet toys in one area, have a basket for the children's toys mm -hmm. so that as you're going, getting ready for bed in the evening, you pick everything up and you throw them in the basket or you know you're having a showing, you pick everything up, you put them in the basket, they're organized, they're still readily available, but they're not all over the floor. Mm -hmm. um, so think about that. Um, lightening up the room, okay? Um, we're not talking about all the time, 
but especially when you're having pictures done and especially when you're having showings. Um, walking into a dark house is not the easiest. Um, I've done enough, you know, as the time's changing, mm -hmm. you know, I've had enough where I've had to use the light on my phone or have a flashlight with me to show houses or even to get into the lockbox to get right. into a house. So, you know, if it is in the evening, just turning on that porch light to, to get things started, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, turn on lights and go ahead and have them turned on when you have a showing so that when they walk in, it's nice and bright and that kind of thing. During the day, open the blinds. Mm -hmm. I know you've got blinds because you don't want the neighbor looking in. Right. But go ahead and just turn them open, you know, the, the Venetian blinds, turn them open a little bit. Um, if you've got shades, you know, go ahead and put them up. Bring in as much natural light Absolutely. and other light. You know, the other thing may be if it's a room that, do, that doesn't have a lot of light fixtures, right. you may want to go ahead and get another lamp or two in the, that sure. room. Let's let them see what they're buying. You mm -hmm. know, show them your space. Um, keeping it dark is not one of those no. things you want to do. I agree. Um, opening curtains, that kind of thing. It makes it feel more welcome. Um, you know, you're going to really make an impact by doing that. Right. Um, just having the windows, uh, you know, the blinds open on a really makes a big difference yes. on a room. I love to open blinds. Oh, just, I do too. Oh, it's just, it <laughs> I know it was still dark. Makes was, you have a whole new attitude. <laughs> that's right. I know blinds. it was still slightly dark when I left out this morning, but I went ahead and went through and opened my blinds. Mm -hmm. So when I do get back to the house, they're already open and mm -hmm. I, that light is already starting to come in. But let's talk finally, what's the big thing that we really, really need to do? And people really don't think about it but it's to clean, okay? If there's yes. nothing else that you can do, let's talk about cleaning. And we talk about from top to bottom, from back to front, mm -hmm. okay? Start when you clean the house, you know, start with the top in mind, you know, the top of cabinets, the top of those ceiling fans, you know, um, the top of the blinds, top of doorways. You know, we don't think about it, but the doorways are one of those areas that, you know, yes. I know I can't reach it, but, you know, I do have a duster that I can reach the top of. Um, you know, think about those, those things. You know, start, uh, one of the best things I ever learned from uh, a cleaning person is you start from the, room, the corner furthest away from the door, you go work top to bottom, oh, wow. and then from that back corner, out the door. Wow. You know, so that you know you've cleaned that room. So, right. you know, by starting at the top, dusting your way down, then you get to the baseboards, the chair railing baseboards, and then the floors, and, and you clean yourself out of the room. Um, so think about those things. Um, cleaning cabinets, um, I've talked about that before in kitchens. Mm -hmm. Washing down your cabinets, you'd be surprised at what's collected on your cabinets oh, and that kind of thing. Um, even cleaning inside your ca inside your cabinets, um, you know, bathrooms, all of those things. Having a fresh, clean house makes a big impact. And if that's all you can do, that is worth it, you know, to, to start there. But just making a few small changes absolutely is going to be a very dramatic um, change to your house. I just had to clean out my cups, my glass, my glasses, because everybody at my house gets buys cups, mm -hmm. new cups, and this yeah. and this, and we keep adding and adding and adding. I said, wait yeah. a minute, we're throwing out the others. You've got to keep continuously, yeah. um, you know, clean and, and clean out, clean out. Well, I have, we keep a box um, set aside, and it's for those things like, you know, um, going through, oh, I haven't checked in my closet, okay, that that top's too big now. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like you said, cleaning out cu cups and things like that. You know, you go to different events and they give you plastic Absolutely. cups. 
That's right. You know, so we're constantly adding to that box. So we do yes. keep something that then when that box is full, we take it, you know, we vitamized it for right. our taxes and we take and take it either over to Enjoy or mm -hmm. um, Goodwill, um, Salvation Army, one of those Whatever places. Whatever your preference is. That's, that's right. There's cl quite a few places that will accept them. So, you know, that is another thing to help in that um, decluttering and that kind of thing, you know, is um, when they open the cabinet doors is <laughs> what's falling out do at things you. fall out? That's if right. they do, it's time yeah, then, for something to go. That's right. So, well, Kathy, good food for thought. And, you know, the cleaning thing was really, I always learn something. I say this every time, <laughs> but I always learn something. And, and come to think of it, you know, I don't know that I clean back to front. I think I just clean. Yeah. So um, that's that's a good method, methodology. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for mm -hmm. all these words of wisdom and, and help for us to, um, if, if you're wanting to sell your house, if you're, you know, whatever, these are good, good, really good tips. So mm -hmm. thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Absolutely. And how can uh, everybody get in touch with you? As always, you can reach me at 252 two six six four zero three eight okay say that one more time two five two two six six four zero three eight okay and we'll be right back with another segment and thank you again kathy thank you sandra see you in two weeks yes <laughs>